Amongst the most controversial takes in the Philippines has always centered around debt. The country's government debt has often been criticized by many. They claim that it is too high, while others state that the government sources their debts from the wrong countries. This is a controversy surrounding the debt from China. Many citizens in recent years have claimed conspiracies about Chinese debt to the Philippines. They claim that it will cause a debt trap. They claim that the interest rate is too high especially compared to other similar lenders. Indeed, that may be true, as many economists like to point out. One country has stood out and has never been called out for their loans. Japan, one of the Philippines' most important partners. Japan is one of the Philippines' largest lenders. They lend billions upon billions of dollars, or in currency equivalents, they lend trillions of yen to the Philippines. These were used to build bridges, schools, and railways. Yet, they were never called out for this. Why? Well, that is because interest rates from Japanese loans are very, very low. The length of payment may also take decades. Hence, Japan is not the country to call out for a debt trap, but rather a country to be thankful for. A country that is actively helping build the Philippines to become a developed nation. The Banco Central of the Philippines' latest data on the country's external debt already shows how much debt the Philippines owes to Japan. Ranking by creditor country, Japan is the number one at a grand total of about 14.8 billion US dollars. That is so much more than the previous countries. The second largest source of debt is the United Kingdom with 4 billion dollars, followed by Singapore at 3.2 billion dollars. Furthermore, it is also important to understand that Japan is not just lending the Philippines through bilateral ways, but also multilateral. You see, the Asian Development Bank, or ADB for short, is also the largest multilateral lender to the Philippines with over $14.88 billion in total lending. ADB is headquartered in the Philippines, but its presidents since its inception have always been Japanese. That is because ADB's largest subscriber capital and voting rights are both in Japan and the US. And it does not stop there. One can easily understand the importance of Japan through individual projects. The Japan International Corporation Agency, or JICA for short, has had a list of ODA loan projects to the Philippines. On two occasions around February 2023, JICA and the Philippines signed a 377 billion Japanese yen deal, which is about 143 billion Philippine pesos, or 2.5 billion US dollars. This project was for the North-South Commuter Railway Project, one of the upcoming grand infrastructure schemes set to help alleviate the country's economic status. What is more amazing, however, is that the interest rate is far from what China often offers. China's interest rate to the Philippines averages around 3%, according to an article in 2020. Japan's interest rate for this specific project, 0.1%. The repayment period is over 40 years, with a grace period of 10 years. It is important to know that this project is one of many projects out there. There is data on the Metro Manila subway project, which is 253 billion yen, with an interest rate of 0.1% and a repayment date of 40 years. The Metro Rail Transit Line No. 3 Rehabilitation Project, signed in 2018, was a 38 billion yen loan with 0.1% interest rate and a repayment date of 40 years. But don't get Japan wrong here. There are also certain projects with higher interest rates. Most, however, are not as high as 3%, averaging only 1-2%. to However, it is important to state that these are not free money. Yes, there is no free money in this world, especially when it involves billions upon billions of dollars. There are reasons why Japan gives loans at such low interest rates, though. One way to look at this is through two considerations, economic and political. On the economic front, aid is seen as a way to foster development in the Philippines, which in turn can create beneficial trade and investment opportunities for Japanese businesses. You see, the Philippines is one of the largest destinations for Japanese investments. There exist big Japanese names, from Toyota to Mitsubishi to Sony, and a huge list that goes on. These companies are seeking to invest in the country's long-term growth and ensure they have a dominant position. 
For the Japanese government, if they want to help their companies grow in the country, they can choose to help develop the Philippines in general. Toyota and Mitsubishi are no small names in the Philippines. They sell billions of pesos worth of vehicles every single year. This then creates an increasing export value for Japan. Secondly, we must also understand that quite a bit of Japanese-funded projects in the Philippines are actually involved with Japanese companies. Let's give you an example here. The Metro Manila Subway, one of the boldest projects in the Philippines. As we noted earlier, Japan has lent a huge sum of money to the overall development of the project. In early 2022, they offered 2.1 billion US dollars worth of a loan, which is about 253 billion Japanese yen just for phase one of the project. The first tranche was already signed in 2018 for 104 billion yen. Now, some of the contractors involved in the overall construction are Japanese companies. The consortium that won the bidding in 2018 for an 11 billion peso project was OC Global, which consists of six Japanese firms. The famous ones are Tokyo Metro, Tonichi Engineering Consultants, and Oriental Consultants Global. Then, in early 2022, a joint venture between Japanese companies and local company Megawide Corporation had bagged yet another 13 billion peso contract to build two stations. Megawide Corporation had worked with Tokyo Construction and Tobishima Construction. To put it simply, Japan could be lending money to the Philippines, but the Philippines could also be paying this money back again to Japanese corporations. Now, it's not that simple, of course. Some have criticized this particular form. Why not just give it to Philippine corporations, as they say? However, while there might be strings attached, it is important to know that Japanese corporations bring an unprecedented amount of knowledge and technology. It is arguably known that Japan has some of the best infrastructure all across the world. For them to work and construct projects in the Philippines is far better than local corporations. Now, let us talk about politics. Aid serves a tool not just for helping build out a country, but also for Japan to establish and maintain strategic alliances. Japan needs allies, especially in today's world. In the Asia-Pacific region, geopolitical dynamics are constantly evolving. China has become the biggest problem for both the Philippines and Japan. Hence, when Japan comes to help the Philippines, it is not just about economics, but politics. Japan needs the Philippines to stay with them. Let's take an example about maritime security. Japan, being an island nation, relies heavily on maritime routes for trade and resources. The security of these routes is crucial for Japan's economy. By cooperating with the Philippines, either through this aid diplomacy or even through the provision of maritime security assistance, Japan is not only helping to enhance the maritime capabilities of the Philippines, but also securing its own trade routes. This aid, while seemingly altruistic, is also a strategic move to counter China's growing influence in the South China Sea. So finally, let us answer the final question. How can Japan even afford to lend at such low interest rates? Well, we can simply see it from Japan's huge amount of foreign reserves. The country has one of the largest foreign exchange reserves in the world, giving it significant financial leverage. This economic stability allows Japan to offer loans at low interest rates as a strategic tool in foreign diplomacy. Moreover, Japan's domestic economic policies play a role. The Bank of Japan has maintained low interest rates for many years to stimulate the Japanese economy. This domestic financial environment enables the government to borrow money at low cost, which can then be lent to other countries at similarly low rates. To put the entire Japan and Philippine alliance in simple terms, they are for the greater good of both countries. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.